Flashback 5.11 into Scary Little Things Curio Shop. As we approached the Scary Little Things Curio Shop's interior door that adjoined it to the Hanging Albatross Pub, another pair of cultists saw us. One of them yelled, You there, stop! They visibly drew pistols. It seemed insane. Every cultist had a gun. I thought the UK and most of Europe had aggressive anti-gun laws. Despite laws against having firearms, everyone seemed to have one. At least every bad guy had a gun. It was a good thing, I contemplated, that we were also not complying with the gun laws, so we too were armed. We were good guys with guns against bad guys with guns. And so we were fighting fire with fire for God's mission quest. I yelled, into the curio shop, move! Taylor had Bob in tow and I led Katie. We entered the curio shop, whose door was fortunately unlocked being an interior door. In fact, there was no lock there at all. The cultists were in pursuit, but we were inside. And without a lock on the door, we could not lock them out. Deputy Taylor looked grim. We've made a mess of things. A little more mess won't make any things worse. She stepped out into the hallway. Bang, bang, pause. Bang, bang, pause. Taylor returned into the room from the hallway. I glanced to see what had transpired. Both cultists were crumpled bloody heaps on the hallway floor, apparently shot in the chest and then in the head to ensure they were not going to be a threat again. The curio shop was primarily full of tchotchkes and trinkets. There were, of course, tarot cards and crystals and all sorts of mystical stuff. And there were gaming, hobby craft, and costume sections even. It did not seem like the curio shop lived up to its name of scary little things. Katie had found enough confidence to walk about the shop now, looking at things to decide if they were worth taking. She came to me carrying a carved rune golden Ouija board with ruby and blood red roses peppered across it. She looked excited. Look, it's a Ouija board and it has roses just like the ones on my keychain. And the shape of the roses is just like the tattoo on my palm from the rose that bit me. Then she added, we have to take it. It's, it's too suspicious. And that girl in the craft shop, she talked about Ouija boards, remember? I nodded. Take it. She smiled, but did not fit inside her backpack, so she just had to hold on to it and carry it. But she did. She was determined to take it with us. There was nothing else I found of interest in the curio shop, again, except for Katie's Ouija board. We approached the curio shop's front door, but found it was padlocked. We could not just walk outside, as envisioned. Deputy Taylor wasted no time. She called Tiny on her walkie-talkie watch. She approached the locked door and pulled out her little freeze spray bottle. And spray spray, iced over lock, bash broken, the lock was gone. And we opened the door. And we had our final egress from the hanging albatross and scary little things curio shop. Tiny pulled up outside the shop's front door as planned, where we rendezvoused and got into the van. He sped away back to Castle Athlone. The next day, we met with Mr. Lesky and Sarah McGilvray. Lesky confirmed he would either liquidate our loot or put it into storage as an asset. He informed us that he created a Midnight Crusaders Trust where he would deposit all assets and properties that we successfully reclaimed. Sarah pulled up an iPad and said, you need to watch this, it's a local newscast. She streamed a video from the local TV news station. The video began with a perky blonde newscaster. Today has been a horror show for Athlone. 12 people were gunned down in the first church of the savior and the killer took his own life. 13 people dead. And there were two fatal accidents, both near the Hanging Albatross pub. Six people died between those crashes. Councilwoman Kara has been listed as a missing person since yesterday as well. Sarah stopped the video and smiled slyly. 
Richard, it looks like the cult has covered up the carnage done to them during your engagements with them. Mr. Lesky said, It would be prudent, though, to leave Athlone for a while. We need to make sure there are no more incidents that happen. At least for a while. We need the heat to die down. Richard, I think you need to go to Prague and reclaim the Flaming Dagger. It's important 